So this, um, when we say Qadr, you have obviously five pillars of Islam, you know, accepting there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the mm-hmm. heavens and the earth, praying five times a day, the fasting during the month of Ramadan, paying the, the poor due tax, the zakat, and the hajj, then the six uh, articles of, pillars, of, yes. of, of faith and belief in one God, the angels, the books, the messengers, um, the day of, day of judgment, and this is Al-Qadr, yes. Qadr. What do you advice do you have for people who who struggle with this? They say they they struggle with this, you know, uh, lack of motivation. Saying, well, at the end, you know, God has determined where I'm going to be, you know, and they don't move because of of this qadr. They 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 can't wrap their mind a- around it. So this kind of paralyzes them. I, I always tell that story, you know. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, you know, uh, a clear warning. Uh, regarding the subject um, and I'll come back to the story that don't indulge into it if you don't know it because it can be very confusing to some Muslims yeah um, is that statement where Ali radiallahu he said this is one of the the secrets of Allah is that authentic yeah yeah Al-Qadr is the secret of Allah and his creation yes um uh, and Al-Qadr is one of the subjects uh, which is very sensitive. Why? Again, because it is associated with the names and the attributes of Allah. And you have to be very careful. Um, so we were warned against indulging into a conversation that leads a person to question and doubt. But there is a minimum because you quoted the six articles of faith. There is a minimum that every single Muslim must know about Al-Qadr in order to develop Iman. You see, again, Islam is not a mystic religion where you sit and say, okay, I'm going to believe in Al-Qadr and how I'm going to do it. So you must read. Yes. Iqra. What? Qadr has four levels. You must believe that. Level number one, you must believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew everything that happened in the past. He knows everything that is happening right now as we speak. Detailed. In details. He's not ignorant of anything. In details. If a leaf falls down. Everything. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُ And he knows everything which will happen in the future. He doesn't have to read a book. No. Even the hypothetical mm-hmm. was the question, what if he knows it? Yeah, because we got to read books to learn. Yes. Allah knows everything. Yes. So this is level number one. You must learn that. Sifatul mm-hmm. ilmi. That's why the subject is related to the attributes of The attribute of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Absolute knowledge. Ilm al-muhit li kulli shay. Two, the attribute of writing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala committed that knowledge into a book. أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Don't you know that Allah knows what's in the heavens and what's in the earth? إِنَّ ذَلِكَ فِي كِتَابِ Indeed, this is all written in a book. So the second attribute that Allah committed that knowledge into what? into a book called the Lawh al-Mahfud, the preserved tablet, which is above the throne, and no one has access. No one knows what's in that book. No one. لا نبي مرسل ولا ملك مقر. Yes. Not a sent messenger, nor a brought by uh, a nearby angel like Jibreel, Mikael, and mm-hmm. Serafin, and so forth. So this is two. That's the minimum that you need to know. Three al-irada, the will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must will for what he knew and what he wrote to come into existence, Mm -hmm. to happen. To happen. Look at this now. After that, Allah created us to make it happen. Allah created us to make it happen. So look at these four attributes. Knowledge, creation, Will, uh, I'm sorry, knowledge, writing, will, creation, divine will, creation, four. You must believe that. 
So everything that happens, happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Now, we use the Qadr, the belief in the divine destiny, to comfort ourselves regarding calamities or things that happen to you that you had no control over. You understand? But we do not use the Qadr, the belief in the Qadr to justify our shortcoming, our laziness, mm -hmm. or our sinning. You're getting that? Yes. You see, so we use Qadr, and, and that's where faith becomes handy when you go through calamities. ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها any مصيبة any calamity that befallen you whether in your own self death loss of wealth loss of children except it's written in a book before it came the four we go back to the four yeah. Allah knew it wrote it willed it so it's a mercy now for you. Permitted it to happen. Yeah. Allah, per and I'll come back to this point. Permitted it to happen. Because you know it's from Allah. Yeah. So there must be a good wisdom behind it. So the brother extended his family now. Yes. And he went on and the sister is struggling with that. Yes. It's, it's, it's for a wisdom. It's a wisdom. It's a wis I'll, I'll come to this. Yeah. I'll, I'll come to this in, 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 a, in, in a moment. So uh, I just want to focus on this point. So we use the Qadr to find comfort. Mm -hmm. وفي حديث أخرجه الإمام مسلم حديث أبي هرارة أبو أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says استعن بالله ولا تعجزن seek help from Allah and don't ever despair and if something befallen you وإن أصابك شيء if something wrong happened to you don't say if I would have done this this would not have happened mm -hmm. لا تقل لو أني فعلت كذا لكان كذا وكذا why لأن لو because if تفتح عمل الشيطان will get شيطان to invade you to question Allah's wisdom why didn't I do this why didn't I save my son why didn't I save my wealth why didn't I make the right business decision rather say قدر الله وما شاء فعل Allah has ordained and whatever he ordained came to pass. Mm -hmm. Qadarullah. Yeah. So again, the point I'm trying to make, we use the Qadar to find comfort pertaining to calamities, hardships, trials and tribulations. That's it. Because you trust Allah's wisdom, that there must be a wisdom behind it. And I will come to this point. But we do not use Qadar to justify a sin you are indulged in, mm -hmm. involved in as we speak, or a sin that you want to do in the future. Here is the story that I wanted to tell. Then I sidetracked. Uh, I used to be an imam in, uh, in uh, Washington DC in Maryland before going to Colorado. So this brother came and he wanted to do counseling because of his wife and so forth. So I said to him, brother, you know, um, this is years back. Actually, I was like still starting in, in knowledge. Mm -hmm. yani. I was start up. Yani. Um, come after Asr, inshallah, let's pray Asr and then I'll sit with you. Um, um, so we prayed Asr and I led the Salah and I looked at the congregation behind me. I didn't see him. So I said to myself, let me go to the office, do some paperwork and, and hopefully, you know, he will show up. If he shows up, khalas, we'll sit. If not, then I'll go home. Knock, knock, knock. Here he is. Salaamu Alaikum, Sheikh. Salaamu Alaikum. I'm here for counseling. So I assumed that he did not pray Asr. So I said to him, Brother, why don't you go make wudu, inshallah, and pray Asr, and I'll wait for you. Uh, yani. Here is the... Allah, here is what he said. Quote, Allah doesn't want me to pray. That's a profound statement he's making. Right away, you tell that person, do you know what Allah wanted for you? Yeah. That's exactly what, what, what it, here it is. So he's using, uh, this is what we call, I'm sorry, I, I, uh, but, uh, 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 this is what we call a sect in Islam called Jabri. Yeah. Fatalist. You know, during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, uh, a man stole, and he used to establish the uh, criminal punishment in him. So he said, Ya Amir al muminin you can't establish the criminal punishment on me because I stole, because I stole bi qadarillah. It was my qadr to steal. 
And Omar said, I will execute the penal puni the, 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 the criminal punishment of a, a thief on you because of Qadarillah too. Fa quite frankly, at this time, I was not very well versed in the subject. So I, again, that subject is a very sensitive. And yes. if, if you go into the subject, you must have the battles. You know, like somebody goes with a boat in, 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 in the sea. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the right to come back, you get in trouble. Yeah. You, you got to be... But subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided me to make that statement, which later on I found out was deep. I said to him, why don't you stand up and go to the bathroom and make wudu and pray asr and say the same statement that Allah wants me to pray? Mm, that's pro even profounder, yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. And this is what is what's in the Quran and Surah فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَ فَسَنُ يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَةِ You said, why don't you go and make wudu and pray and, and pray. say Allah wants me to and pray. Allah wants me to pray. Now you reverse it. Because you don't know what Allah wrote for me to, for you to begin with. Do you know what Allah wrote for yeah. you? Where the ulama, the scholars, they say, يَحْتَجُّ بِالْمَجْهُولِ وَيَتْرُكُ الْمَعْلُومِ He is using the unknown as an evidence. He doesn't know it. Meanwhile, he's rejecting the knowing that he, Allah sent you a messenger telling you that you should pray in order to be happy in this world, not depressed, in order to go to Jannah in the hereafter. Clear, so which one should you take? Clear evidence or your uh, desires? No, no, no. Yeah. Known evidence. You have a known evidence. Known clear evidence. Yeah. And, and So you reject that and you use what? Your desires. Well, the desire is the base, but you're using unknown. unknown. You don't know yeah. what Allah wrote for you. Yes. For again, we go back to the... But when we when we debate with fatalists, when when you talk to them about that stuff, they always use a very interesting hadith, al hadith al Bukhari, a conversation that happened between Adam alayhi salam and Prophet Moses, and this is not Israelites, this is authentic Israelites yeah. because the Prophet told us about when they met the night of the ascension, mm -hmm. Adam uh, Musa met Adam, and he immediately said to Anta Adam. You are Adam, our father. You are the one who got us out of the garden because eating of the tree. So uh, Adam looked at his grandson with a, uh, with wisdom. <laughs> you know, and he said, well, Anta Musa. <laughs> you are Musa, my grandson. Uh, Allah wrote the Torah for you, giving you the Torah. Didn't you read in the Torah that this was written upon me? Pay attention here. So the, the fact is the people who believe in that sect, they tell you, Adam is using the Qadr as what? A justification for his mistake. mistake. And imagine at the end of this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam actually made a very interesting statement. فَحَجَّ آدَمُ مُوسَى فَحَجَّ آدَمُ مُوسَى فَحَجَّ آدَمُ مُوسَى Meaning what? The Prophet is saying three times. He said three times that Adam won the debate. Mm -hmm. Adam made the point. Ah, come to me now. I tell you. Yes, you may use the Qadr as a justification regarding something in the past that you repented from. Mm. Because everything is Qadr. Allah permitted it to happen. Yes. Uh, you know, like you say, Wallah, uh, like I was, t you know, uh, you know, when I was young, you know, teenager, Astaghfirullah, and I was doing this. Allah, Allah wrote upon me that I, I end up drinking or I end up doing this haram stuff. But Alhamdulillah, I repented. Alhamdulillah. So using it, what? Not being boastful about it, but you're trying to let people know that you can be a sinner, but, but you cannot use the qadr regarding a sin that you're committing now uh -huh. or a sin that you're planning to commit in the future. Yes. Are you getting this? Or Absolutely. Yeah. Now let's come to the issue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willing certain things that we don't like that Allah knew wrote willed it and he actually permitted it to happen you see out of respect we do not attribute evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that is why when we say believing in al-qadr khayrihi wa sharri believing in al-qadr the good of it and what we consider to be evil the scholars they say we have two types of evil Sharrun mutlaq, absolute evil. What does it mean, sharrun mutlaq? Zero goodness will come out of it. And there is another type of evil that they call sharrun nisbi. The best way to translate this in English, 
purposeful evil. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? You see it evil, but the end result of it will be good. It has some purpose behind there it. There is a purpose behind it. Purposefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never permit the first type to take place in earth. Absolutely not. No way. Only human can do uh, absolute evil. That you, you go and do something that, but Allah, no. Never. Will never permit. Uh, uh, and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa invited us to read every Friday a chapter called Al-Kahf. In that chapter, there is a story out there, if you reflect upon it, it explains this. It sends that message to you. What story? Musa and Al-Khidr. You get two individuals, both of them are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but with one difference. One of them sees with the eye of divine tomorrow, and the other one is judging what he sees based on now. Mm -hmm. You understand? They met together, they got on a ship, they didn't have money, these masakeen, poor people giving them a free ride. Musa is sitting on the ship and he sees Al-Khidr taking a tool and he's digging a hole in the ship. For Musa, because he's judging the situation now, that's absolute evil. These guys giving us a free ride and they are masakeen. What are you doing? But you see, Al-Khidr has an extension to what? Allah revealed to him why he should do this. Mm -hmm. He got the whole picture. Yes. And that's why look at the word sabr. How many times it's repeated in that, in that mm -hmm. segment of the surah. Alam aqul laka innaka lan tastati'a ma'i sabra. Alam aqul laka innaka lan tastati'a ma'i sabra. Haven't I told you that you're not going to be patient with me? And that's the issue. That, that's why when, we're, when we're, we're inflected with a calamity, we're supposed to do what? Right away. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا تَسْتَرْجَعُ تَصْبِرْ Be patient. Be patient. Allah will show you the purpose later on. Mm -hmm. That is why the Prophet ﷺ described وَالصَّبْرُ ضِيَاءٌ أَبِي مَالِكِ الْأَشْعَرِي حَرِيفِ صَحْلِ إِمَامُ مُسْلِمْ Sabr is light. Why? Because if you're patient, Allah will make you see the wisdom. Mm -hmm. So they get off the ship. Look at this calamity now. They are walking together and here is some Israelite, if you like Israelite. Huh? Al-Khidr goes and he grabs a little boy under the age of puberty and he separates his head from his body. This is absolute evil. Imagine this. This is, I mean, one of the, the Qiraat, Zakiya. You know, we believe as Muslims that children who die before the age of puberty are what? They go to Jannah. There is actually a consensus about this. There's actually a debate amongst the theologians, you know, the, 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 the ulama al-usul, the scholars who, who, who teach the usul, the fundamentals of the religion regarding atfal al-mushrikeen, the children of the mushriks. Mm -hmm. If they die before the age of puberty, there is a question mark that they could go to Jannah too because they are not accountable. Because accountability in Islam kicks off when? when at puberty. Yeah. At, at puberty. But we believe as Muslims that, but you cannot identify, you cannot point at this child and say he's going to Jannah. You can't say that. Mm -hmm. You have to do it strictly, without يعني, identifying. So, do you consider uh, Khidr, do we consider him a prophet? He's a prophet of Allah. Mm -hmm. And I know some people don't like this. Mm -hmm. like, Maqamu al -wali nabi, the status of a wali above the. This is a. Come on, get, get a life. He said, Wa ma an amri. I did not do this on my own. I was receiving commands from Allah. Who receives commands from Allah but a prophet? Mm -hmm. You see, uh, c come on. Yeah, I mean, uh, I understand people are going to, you know, some brothers are going to resent me for saying that. But listen, I love you. And, you know, that's the way it is. Shahid, they got off the ship. Uh, Wallahi, I want to tell you something, uh, Eddie. Uh, if you want to name the greatest calamity that a person can be inflicted with is the loss of your son or daughter. Allah is telling you, even in this one, there is goodness. يعني ورد في الحديث that Allah would send the angel to someone who lost his son. Uh, what is my slave is saying? Ya Rabbi, he's saying Alhamdulillah. So Allah will say, Abdi, my slave, أخذت منه فلذة كبدي. I took a piece of his liver. ويحمدني. And he's saying Alhamdulillah. He's accepting it. Accepting my qada. 
ابن لعبد بيتا في الجنة وسموه بيت الحمد Build for my slave a house in Jannah and call it the house of, of, of praise house of uh, it, it's a great calamity Allah is telling you even in this one there is goodness so Musa because he's judging now what Al-Khidr did in the eye of now Al-Khidr has the eye of what? divine tomorrow mm -hmm. but again uh, uh, we go back to these brothers Al-Khidr doesn't know all the knowledge of the unseen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave certain people certain bits and pieces of the knowledge because they don't say that he knows everything in the past. Yeah. No, 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 no. عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَىٰ غَيْبِهِ أَحَدًا إِلَّا مَنْ اِرْتَضَى مِنْ رَسُولِ The knower of the unseen, he only gives, like our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was given yes. some of the unseen, mm -hmm. uh, the signs of the hour and so forth. فَالْخِدْرْ now, he knows why he's doing this. But Musa is judging it now. For him, this is an absolute evil. Shar mutlaq. You're killing a baby, a child. But later on, look at this. Look at this. This child, would he have grown past the age of puberty, he would become a disbeliever. Not only this, he would have caused his believing parents to become disbelievers. What is the solution for this? Huh? For him to die before the age of puberty goes to Jannah, his parents to maintain their Iman, not only this, for their patience, Allah will replace them with a believing child. Happy family at the end. Sahih or not? The story again. You know, when, when you have to trust the wisdom of Allah. Listen, sabr fard. When you're inflicted with a calamity, exercising the servitude of patience is mandatory. Rida, no. You accepting it, no. Mm -hmm. yeah, later on, you accept it, yeah. no. Nobody said that you have to accept it and be happy about it. Mm -hmm. don't, don't walk around and, oh, Allah has taken my son, I'm happy. No, don't do that. No, no. But patience, no. Uh, last uh, question before.